Hello everyone. How is everybody today? I was bored. So I'm making dinner, so I thought I'd, I'd let you join me so I can talk talk to somebody besides myself. <laughs> so I made Thanksgiving, Canadian Thanksgiving dinner last week for, on Sunday for my family. Um, most of the leftovers were gone by Tuesday night. <laughs> Although I did put stuff aside to make turkey pot pie, which is a favorite. So I'm going to make that. I'll show you how I make it. I will put the recipe in the description later if you want to try it. And then I'll, let, I'll tell you what I do. I'll tell you what the recipe calls for. I'm making a little extra because I'm going to leave some for my, uh, or send some to my oldest. So let's turn you guys a little bit this way. Let's turn this light off so we don't have the glare in the background. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. So first of all, I I have leftover turkey all chopped up. And that I'm just gonna wait a loot if you're not a huge fan of dark meat or white meat or whatever. So good way to use that leftover parts that you don't care for. <laughs> I got carrots and celery the other day, so I already chopped that up. I've got some onion chopped up. I've chopped up some potatoes. I am using um, oat flour. It calls for a little bit of flour. You can use just regular flour. I have almond milk, but you can use regular milk. Um, it calls for over here. <laughs> It calls for, where is it? Two cups of water plus two chicken bouillon cubes. I've only used my leftover gravy, so we'll just I'll throw that in there. And oregano, parsley, pepper, and not a lot of stuff. Too much stuff on the roof. <laughs> and salt. <laughs> so first of all, in the pot, I'm just going to let you guys see the pot, and then I'll, I'll talk. <laughs> so, hopefully get you guys turned down here properly so you can see the pot. It says a large skillet, but I get too much going, so I'm going to turn that up to medium heat. I usually put it somewhere around six or seven because I don't like waiting forever. I need to get something to stir it around with. I'm going to use my oh, bamboo spoon, Mine's, or wooden spoon. Mine's bamboo. What we got in here? Moonlight Adventures. What are you having? Making dinner. Yeah. Oh, or turkey and ham sandwiches are the best. Nice. We're having keto chicken fajitas tonight. That sounds delicious. I was watching a video earlier, um, so we'll get, some, get some crumbs out of the way, I was watching a video earlier, actually, I was a couple who were in Cozumel, and they went out for dinner to a restaurant, and he was having fajitas, I was thinking they looked really good, I don't have any chicken right now, I got my pots heating on, I would love to have some fajitas. Maybe next weekend. No, oh, we're going to get LARP next weekend. Um, well, maybe when I get home from LARP. But I gotta get some uh, gluten free um, wraps. So it calls for two tablespoons of butter for the recipe. I'm eyeballing it. That's a little extra because I got a little bit more than what the recipe calls for in meat and all that other stuff. So, so two tablespoons now in there. And then the other two tablespoons go over in this skillet over here. You can't really see that, can you? I'm just going to put the other two tablespoons in the other skillet. So it's ready in the skillet, not on the burger. I can get the butter out of the way. So 
the way it was heated up and melted. So I'm going to be throwing in the carrots, celery, and the onion. Or as it's referred to, and cooking is a mere poids. Low keto food down 24 pounds so far. Congratulations, that's awesome. I would love to do keto again. I did keto started February 1st, 2019, because that was going on, or not cruise, I was going to Cuba in April, so I wanted to lose some weight. And I did Cuba, or did Cuba, I did keto. And by the time I went uh, to Cuba, I had lost. Almost 30 pounds, around 30 pounds, something like that. And I managed to keep that off until, you know, that nasty word came in 2020. And when we're stuck at home and for so something to, to do to entertain ourselves, we were trying out different recipes and stuff. So I wasn't really sticking to the keto very well. Which was kind of disappointing after losing all that. I did get up and maintain just, I, I think I had put nine pounds back on or something like that and maintain that for a while. But then I'm going to go to this. This one is this grapes a little better. So we got the butter melting in there. I'm going to throw the onions in. Already. I just did all the dishes too before I started this. Get them started for a minute. It's medium heat. Sometimes I turn it up a little, just a little bit higher. Just to... We've got a lot of hard vegetables here that need to be softened up. I didn't, I didn't mind keto. Wow, I turned the thermos. I turned the furnace, furnace on today because it's getting a little chilly in here. But the thermostat kept saying it's not that cold yet. Not that cold yet. It just finally kicked on. <laughs> it's uh, 47 here, but my thermostat was still saying it was 74 in the house. It must have dropped below 72 because I think that's where I put the thermostat at. I know, I can always put a jacket in, in the. Not a jacket, I can put a sweater or a hoodie on and socks. I know, I'm, I'm in bare feet, I can admit it. I am not a person that likes wearing shoes and socks if I can avoid it, but. So that's a, uh, onion, celery, carrots, and the original re or the basic recipe calls for two stalks of carrots and two or two stalks of celery and two carrots and a small onion. I eyeball what I got. <laughs> so along with that, we're gonna throw in the parsley and oregano. Go with the oregano first. And I don't measure. I used to when I was first doing it, but I don't measure anymore. Oregano, one teaspoon. So I'm going to probably put in about, about two teaspoons. And it calls for three tablespoons of dried parsley. One. Two, three, and a bit more. <laughs> Some salt. I was going to say, salt and pepper. Salt and pepper to taste. 
We'll put some salt in now. We taste it later and add some more if it needs it. Oops. And some pepper. Move those out of the way. We'll stir that up. Let that sit for a few minutes. Excuse me. I'm just going to grab the lid and keep the heat in there. Crank that up a little bit. We've got some leftover turkey gravy. We've got some leftover other gravy I made with chicken broth from, the, from another night. I can use up both of those. I'm going to make a proper pot pie. in the oven, which uh, let's preheat the oven too. So right now to 350. So I can preheat so it's when it's ready to go in. I'll make a proper pot pie and then um, I'm going to keep some as like almost like a stew and I'm going to put that in the freezer for LARP for next weekend. And then I'm putting I'm sending some to my oldest because the no, they've had a busy weekend. They had a wedding and they went to a Renaissance Fest and traveling around. So instead of asking them to come into town for dinner, I said I would put some aside that they could take home and cook up one for themselves. Because it's a favorite of theirs too. So we do what we, we do what we have to do. So if there's extra, there's extra. I'll make one for me and my son and my girl and his girlfriend here for tonight. Some for me for LARP. They feed us on LARP, but it's usually burgers and burgers. What else? Bacon and eggs, breakfast, pancakes, which I can't have pancakes. So if you have bacon and eggs. Or bacon and eggs and sausage and then lunch is usually burgers grilled cheese sometimes they have a soup or a chili or whatever i have to see what's in that um and then supper is usually burgers and whatever i don't i haven't seen the uh i haven't seen the menu they haven't put that out yet um because they have been a little busy this weekend. The owners of the LARP Guild we participate with got married on Friday, had the reception on Saturday. So their family's been a little busy and it's um, her parents that usually do the meals. So let's set this over here. Give us a stir. We're getting there. I'll soften it a bit. Put the onions translucent, get that all mixing together. No. Nope. I don't want the butter running down the outside of this other pan. Just scoop that down. A little part of first parsley, you know, oregano in there, but that doesn't matter. It's all going in the same pot originally. Originally? Eventually? Eventually? Flour, the milk, and back of the one. Do I need the tablespoons anymore? I'm going to take that out hold it. I think I need just one more thing to wash. I could put this other pan on low. Start melting that butter. This weekend, yesterday I went, went to, met up with my friends from out of town. I have two friends that are picked me up 
there from almost 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, kind of northeast of me. They picked me up and we went about almost an hour south of me to meet up with my friends from two hours away in Windsor. So we met in the middle and we went out for lunch. And then we went to um, went to a couple places. Um, one was called Birdie's Nest. Well, you've done something on Turn on the wrong burner. One's called Birdie's Nest, and it's kind of a gift shop. It has a little bit of everything. I got, I got, I got two, two Christmas gifts I bought there. Yeah. Got two Christmas gifts there. And then went to um, another place called the Glass House. Which is kind of like, it's a nursery, but it also has like gifts area and stuff. You wander around there, they got some outdoor stuff. And I bought a couple more things there. They had a sale on, so I got a couple more things there for Christmas gifts. So I can say I started my Christmas shopping. I just want to cook this down and I want to get the carrots a little more tender. I guess I can upside add in spiritual vegetables or soft. I don't think we're going to see if they're soft yet. That's getting there. Carrots are almost soft enough. or gravy is what I use. And it burns to a foil and we stir in the potatoes and cook until they are tender but firm. That's the longest part. Let's see. Like this seems like it takes a long time to get potatoes for a little bit. Get them going. Start stirring the gravy in with a little bit of water because the one is pretty thick. Let's stir that in there. That's one. Stir in the other one. That's two. That's going to take a few minutes because. Had it out for a little bit, but it's still kind of cold, so I have to wait that to come back up to a boil. Get it to a boil before you throw the uh, potatoes in. Grab the one whisk, help get the lumps in. I might have to throw more water in there, I don't know. Depends on how thick it gets. Or how thick it is. We'll see. So the other in the other pan I've got I'll move that up a little bit. You see both pans now? Yeah. The other pan's got some butter melting. And I got just that on the lowest temperature. And we're gonna throw the, the turkey in there to heat through. So we'll just we'll just keep stirring it around to heat it through. 
Let's go. So I got some white and some dark turkey. I was running in a white turkey when I got around to cutting it up for the pot pie. So it was like, well, it's left over white and then dark. And then I had to pull apart the drumsticks and all that to get enough, uh, enough stuff. Hello, James. Welcome in. I'm just making some turkey pot pie from leftover turkey. I've, uh, I started with this pot here and I had some butter and then some carrot, celery, onion, salt, pepper, oregano, and parsley are in there. I cooked them until they were soft and now I've thrown in, it calls for bouillon and water. Um, I used my leftover gravy from, from uh, Thanksgiving. But I'm going to put the recipe in the description afterwards. I might have to water that gravy down a bit depending on how much. Because we might want to have some juice to the uh, wrap right to the pot pie. We want some liquid, but not too soupy. I did still need the. It says how many. Three tablespoons of flour. I'm using oat flour right now because I'm trying to keep it gluten free as much as I can. I can use regular flour. I have some gluten free flour in there, but I haven't opened that yet, so I don't want to open it until I need it. And this is just, this is some butter and leftover turkey that I'm just, it just warms through for now. Until, gotta get this, gotta get this gravy boiling. And then we're going to throw the potatoes in there to cook in the boiling gravy. And that concoction. Hello Carnival Cruise Addicts. Welcome in. Thanks for stopping by. Good job on your your second live stream but first official StreamYard live stream. It did, you know, don't worry about that because I did the same thing on my first my first live stream I just had popped up on YouTube and I was like I was thinking, come on, I was on for like two minutes and I was gone. The next one I did, somebody had told me, oh, I have to use StreamYard. Well, I didn't, for some reason, I didn't, or I didn't get StreamYard and YouTube to connect. So I was talking to some people on StreamYard, some people on YouTube. <laughs> so then my friend, Call Me V, came down and she got me straightened out how to do it. So it helps to have, you know, friends that can help you out a little bit. I'm just gonna pour my milk out here so I can put the rest of well, half a cup of milk, so it's gonna probably take a little bit more because I got a little bit more of So I'll give it probably three quarters. I live on a main road, so you'll hear sirens sometimes. That was a fire truck. See the fire trucks or ambulances going through. I don't really like my main road and there's another main corner intersection that goes towards the hospital. And or towards where the uh, fire, fire station is. So I'm going to drain my potatoes as I've had them sit here in water. I probably did more potatoes than I needed to, but like I said, I want to take I want to take some like a stew to larp. I want to give my oldest some to make pot pie with. Yes. They were kind of busy this weekend, so they didn't get so throw all the potatoes in there. It calls for three medium potatoes peeled and cubed. I usually do more than that. I want to have some vegetables, some substance in here. So now, the next part. 
is getting that to come back to a boil and boil enough to um, cook potatoes. Hey, Busby, how you doing? I know what to do with turkey gobble. I got gobble gobble. Well, we did gobble gobble most of it up in like two days. We'll turn you guys up here a bit so I can chat with you. So we gobbled most of it up in, in like two days and we pigs of ourselves because I had a 17.3 pound turkey. Um, it was my oldest and his wife and my youngest girlfriend and me had turkey dinner. My youngest was working so then we walked down the road which is like five minutes and took him a takeout container of turkey dinner because he worked till 11 that night and then good turkey sandwiches we they were making plates of leftover turkey for lunch and dinner and like you know two days i was down it's like i'm not going to have enough turkey left for uh pot pie so i started cutting up the leftovers put them in a container and it's like I put on piece of uh, masking tape on top saying for pot pie and then uh, I cut up the vegetables the other day, Friday. Yeah, I went and got to the mobile market, got more vegetables. And so what vegetables I already had here, I cut up the celery, I cut up some onions, I cut up carrots. So they were all ready to go. So all I just to do today, I had to uh, do the potatoes. And this bring it. Wifey just made the amazing chicken pot pie. Well, I that's another thing. You could use leftover chicken. It says in my thing. This is a recipe book I made my kids. It's like a duo tang, but it has like plastic sleeves in it. So I made my two kids and my adopted kid all a recipe book of our favorite recipes that we do. And most of them are very simple stuff to make. Um, ones that are a little bit more difficult. I note in there this is a little bit more difficult recipes. So it says turkey or chicken pot pie. And it calls for, the basic recipe calls for one and a half cup cooked turkey or chicken cubed. And if I do turkey, or if I do chicken, I bite the leftover chicken, or I might get a rotisserie chicken and cut it up, or I cook up a couple of chicken breasts and I just cut them up to make the uh, pot pie. Just do whatever's easiest. This is starting to come back to a boil. This is going to be the long way part. But it does look like a stew right now. Oops. It does look like stew. I used darker stuff, darker second agent for the gravy than I usually use the poultry one. We're going to bring that to a boil and let the potatoes cook. Over in the other pan, I got the chicken, turkey, sorry, turkey, the butter, added in the flour, and then I will add um, yeah, that, that one, melted the other butter, turkey, and flour, and then you add milk to it and heat it through. Let's put the milk in there. It's going to thicken up because it's got milk in the flour. But it all mixes up and it all works out when I put it all together. So I just, I just, I got this on low and I just, I don't keep turning it. I, I adapted this recipe in many ways. Like I said, like I said, instead of using the water and bouillon, I use leftover gravy most of the time. Or use a little broth and make some gravy. <laughs> it's just easy that way. And you can put it in like a, if you want to do it in like a pie shell with another crust on top, you can do it that way. Um, I go to a restaurant just outside of town here. It's called Olives. And they make, you order a, a Chicken pot pie it comes in a little round casserole that's about I don't know, six or eight inches oval. 
and it has a puff pastry on top. Well, I'm not going to the trouble of making a puff pastry. So what I do is I put mine all in a casserole bowl, and then I get it heated up, and then I will take the Pillsbury Crescent Rolls, and I will use some of those, lay them on top, you know, kind of seal the seams, tuck them in, and that, and do the kind of a puff pastry that way. And everybody likes it. The kids eat it up real quick. But it's a good way to use up leftover turkey or chicken. Never thought I would make a beef pot pie too. But I don't usually have leftover beef around here because any of the times I go to the grocery store, their idea of a roast beef is like this long and like this big around. I'm like, that's not a, a roast. My mother used to buy a roast of beef. Oh, about, sorry, about that long and like this big around. <laughs> so I was telling the story going, met up with my friends yesterday and we went to, like I said, we went to the one restaurant. Well, it wasn't, wasn't really a restaurant. We get down there, the two guys pick me up, and we get there first. Well, we're coming into town the back way and we get over near this restaurant. Some traffic lights are in. We almost get hit. Try to make turn one turn corner, then we get go down to go turn into the, it was a bakery they wanted to go to all places. So it's like, yeah, great. <laughs> I'm gluten free <laughs> for the most part. I try to be anyways, because I, I pay for it if I don't. I paid for it after Thanksgiving, but get there. They got no power. So we're trying to get a hold of them. We're sending messages, and we called them, eventually they answered. And they well, we're just up down the road. We're gonna, we'll meet up with you, and we'll see. You know, we'll decide if we're going to stay there or go somewhere else. But this is they pulled up. The power came back on. So we ended up staying there for lunch. Oh, they did have a, a cooler that had good free stuff in it. They had bagels and loaves of bread that were $9.95, something like that. And they had like eight inch trays of brownies. Looked good. $17.99 for a small tray of brownies. Yeah, no thanks. So I ordered, I had beef stew. It was good. And I thought, didn't think till last night after the home. I was like, oh, I never got thought to ask whether the gravy was gluten free, but hey, I'd already eaten it. It was probably the best thing I ate all day. Um, I ordered a Caesar salad with no croutons, with chicken. Well, the chicken had a, was a weird texture, and it was dry. The bacon bits, that was real bacon crumbles. They were bigger than like the little bits you expect. And then it wasn't romaine lettuce. It says romaine lettuce on the thing, but it wasn't romaine lettuce. It was some kind of leaf lettuce, more like lettuce, not not kale, but a, another kind of lettuce that was really roughly on the edges that they use for like decorating when they make a tray. There was no taste to it. And then the Caesar dressing wasn't that great. When the soup came, it came in a, a soup. It was like a French onion soup bowl. And and the, uh, you know, they ordered coffee that not came in a, in a mug. But when they brought their sandwiches and my stew, it was all in takeout containers. Mine was in a, like, a cellophane takeout container that was maybe uh, eight inches long by about five inches, by about an inch, inch and a half. That was eight something, and have the chicken on top of it was another $3.50, or something like that. So it was almost $12 for this little bee Caesar salad. The beef stew was only four something. It was like, okay. So I got to I gotta pay, and then I got into an argument. My friend and ended up paying. She kept stepping in front of me. It's like, fine, I can pay for, my, I can pay for myself. I'm not going to, all right, fine. <laughs> Come to, you know, 
first come somewhere, so bad. I'll, I'll just buy her a meal later or something. So we did do the shopping in these couple shops and that, and I forget what they had eaten at lunch. But this was like a one or something. I don't know, about 5, 36. Everybody's probably get hungry again, so we didn't. I didn't get a lot to eat. We didn't enjoy that meal too much. So I was kind of hungry, but I wasn't going to say anything. But then everybody else decided, well, let's go to this other restaurant that my friend from Windsor usually go to when, after they come up here to visit. We get there, walk in, and look at the other the menu. I wondered, you know, what, what, they're, what are they going to have that's gluten-free? And I look at the big board on the side, it's like pizzas, burgers, panzerottis, this, that, and I'm like, great. <laughs> so I was looking at the menu. I ended up ordering, it was a six ounce strip loin steak. And it come with fettuccine alfredo. So I asked, well, can I, instead of fettuccine, can I get um, some fries? Potatoes, which French fries are gluten free. I should ask for the seaweed potato fries and have those too. She goes, yeah, but we still have to charge you for the pasta. I'm like, Whatever. Can I still get the fries? But sure. Oh, do you want some coleslaw? Okay, as long as it's not extra. <laughs> so it comes. The steak has onions and mushrooms on it. Look good. It looks on a bun. Oh, she's, oh you wanted the, that gluten free. I just grabbed the bun, pulled it out, and handed it to her. <laughs> well, she had a plate in her hands. I just threw it on the plate. The. So not so fries, they were good, like steak size, what they call it? steak fries, the big thick ones. They were good. Hello Michelle, how are you doing? <laughs> the coleslaw came in, you know, like the little containers they have for dipping. If it was in like one of those. <laughs> okay, like two, three, four coleslaw. Oh, and she asked me, how do you want your steak done? I was like, well, medium rare, so I like the steak. Okay. There's no way this steak could be medium rare. It was like uh, maybe a quarter, not quite a half inch thick, not, not much more than a quarter thick. It was one color all the way through. So it's like there's no way it's medium rare. It wasn't tough, thank goodness. There's headlights over there. This dog's barking at. Luckily, it wasn't. Had them. Probably somebody getting a delivery or something. Um. Just didn't stop. Steak wasn't tough, but I, I ate it. I was just that hungry with the mushrooms and the onions, and then I had ate most of the fries. <laughs> My friends go, one friend goes, You want dessert? There was five desserts on the, they had the menus on the table under plastic. She goes, she goes Do you want dessert? I'm looking and going, There's five choices. I can pretty much gluten, get your drink, none of them are gluten free. And so he asked when the lady came back, she goes, I have no idea. So it's like, the only thing I could have probably, other thing they could order, they, were, they did have a pizza that was on car, uh, the cauliflower crust. Ouch. I'm going to check here and check these potatoes, see if they're cooked. Getting there. Turn that down a bit so it doesn't burn on the bottom. Hey, those are getting there. Grab one of those bigger ones. Come on. Not, not quite there yet. Put this lid over without burning my fingers. I'll stir the turkey. But it was good to see my friends. Um, 
my one friend from Windsor may be coming to town next weekend, but I won't be here. I'll be at Mars, but it's her dad's birthday and he still lives in town here. She used to she used to live here many years ago. Um, she doesn't know if she's gonna make it, you know, make it up next weekend. So it might be the weekend after. So weekend after um, my one friend from north of here is going to pick pick me up and then the three of us will go do something. Which I would kind of like because we're the original three. Um, I've known her since uh, since kindergarten, and we've known the other friend since grade ten. So we've known each other for, for a good many years. We used to do stuff. Did I get a thing I sent to yet? Not yet, Busby. We don't have mail delivery on the weekends. Um, I got all my Amazon packages. I haven't got my stickers yet either, so I should be getting what you said, Busby, and my stickers this coming week, and then I'll show you guys what stickers I got. And if anybody wants stickers, they can email me or which my email's in the um, about page. If you want stickers, I'll send you stickers. But I'll show you guys. I'll do an un a mail opening thing, a mail call. It won't be an unboxing, I don't think. I didn't get that many. I got, I think I got 250 to start with just to see how they are and see how long that lasts. And then I'll add more. I or ordered them from, what's it called now? It's from Vancouver. Atomic Signs? Atomic Design. Atomic Signs in Vancouver. So they ship anywhere in Canada free, which was a nice bonus. So I had to pay taxes, but the shipping was free. So that was a perk. That's where V got her stickers from. Call me V. And they were pretty good. So I wanted to have them before I'm 23, but we didn't get a chance to order them before then. Pretty quick though. I ordered them. I ordered them on the Friday or Saturday of our Thanksgiving weekend, which was what your Columbus Day over in the states that weekend. And I, for, I figured that, that they were probably closed for the weekend. I didn't look at my email until Tuesday, and they already sent me a, an email saying they received my order, and they sent me a proof to approve and so I sent that back within the next day they were print already printed and they're in the back of the mail so but should be coming within the next couple days do you all still do Thanksgiving the end of November Michelle no our thanks Canadian Thanksgiving is the first or second Monday of October and then a Canadian, yeah, Canadian Thanksgiving in America, I know it's the third Thursday, I think it is. Um, uh, Christmas wise, I don't, well, I started shopping already, but I don't do any decorating in that until after the November 11th, which is Remembrance Day for us. I can't remember what you guys call it, Memorial or Veterans Day. Veterans Day, isn't it? Over there, different names for it. Um, my son and his girlfriend are having a Halloween party for their work friends. So Saturday before Halloween, so they have started decorating for Halloween. So there is there's some stuff hanging there. There's all kinds of stuff in the living room. I've got. I've got bats hanging up over my head here. <laughs> There's rubber bloody fingerprints over on the on the uh, door over there. So those clicky things. The bathroom. There has a sign on the bathroom that says, "Please don't summon demons in the bathroom." But there is also you know the peel and stick the like a, a plasticky 
stuff that you put on the windows, the window cleaning things. She's got bloody footprints coming across the floor here. And then in the bathroom, there's also, she got 3D printed hands from somebody. They were smaller than she wanted. I don't know what she did with one of them, but the other one, my son took the knob off the, the cupboard door over the toilet and screwed the, uh, put the nail, the screw nail in the other way and has hooked the other hand on the bathroom cupboard door so it's their hands sticking out of it. So it should be fun for them. I will, I will be in my room that night having my own private party and I'll probably go live that night when they're having their party. This is, so I'm not up there by myself. And potatoes are done. So I'm going to turn that down. I'm going to uh, turn this back down so you guys can see it. You don't have to look at me while I do the rest. Yep. That's boiled long enough. The potatoes are cooked. The carrots are probably cooked. I'm going to mix in the turkey. I just got all the dishes done, I have to do them again. So I'm going to stir in the turkey there. That's going to thicken it up a bit. Make sure I've turned all those off. Made a mess all over the stove again. I had already wiped that off. So it's just like a stew right now. I am actually going to turn that off. Now what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get my casserole and I need a label. So I've got my oven preheated too for. I love to do Thanksgiving. <laughs> just me, I would probably do the smallest turkey I could get, or I would just do a turkey breast. Well, I'll probably get the smallest turkey I could get because um, I'm going to get a tassel. That distracted. <laughs> because I like to stuff the turkey. Okay, that one. I'll do this one. Okay, that's one thing I did last weekend that was not gluten-free and that I ate quite a bit of and paid for it for a few days. Do this without slopping it all over. Make sure there's no cat hairs in there. Probably could put more carrots in there, like a lot of potatoes, but Oh well. Like I said, I'm going to make a pot pie for us tonight. I would like to have. So I'll do right now. I'm thinking of it. Put some aside for myself for taking next weekend a lark just for a meal for like stew. And I'll put some aside for my Hold this in this way so they can make a pot pie themselves. So that's enough for me for a meal. It's hot. What do I want to do that size? Think, think, think. So a lot of the containers, so I don't have to worry about not getting it back. I don't know what size casserole pans pots I have. I'll put this size for uh, I'll just pop. This size for them. They can do what they like with it. They can put it in the casserole and do it that way. Or they can uh, I'll give the roll of crescent rolls and then they can, if they want to put crescent rolls on top, they can do it that way. 
If not, they can uh, just do that like a stew and just make the crescent rolls themselves. So this is going to be a good full casserole. And I'm going to put it in the oven for about, uh, about 20 minutes and then I then will jack up the heat high enough to do the crescent roll on top. Because I'm too lazy and I'm not great ma at making pie crust, so I don't do that type of pot pie. So, I guess I'll put this one. I'm going to put it over that one for the stove. Like I showed you last weekend, that's where I stuck the, the uh, innards of the turkey. Is that full? I'm going to stick it in there for about 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Put this stuff over the sink. I'm just going to wipe off this stove here before it dries on. Let me sit down and chat while that's going. I'll stay on with you long enough so you can see the finished product. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught my short. I did do put a short out of what the meal looked like afterwards. What the turkey looked like afterwards. I like how I calculate out how long it's going to take, and it always ends up being different. It was like three and a half hours, and it was done. Okay, so I've got a lid for that one. I'm going to need a lid for that one. And then I'll have to label it. This one's for mom, this one's for Nikki. I probably should have taken a little bit of that, but I'm not gonna put those on tight. Uh, you guys hold on, I'm just gonna bring you down here. I'm just gonna stop the camera for a minute. down here. Actually chat face to face. Okay, I'll try to do this without knocking my camera plug in this, which I've done that before and knock myself on the live stream. Okay. Oops. Camera straight. Oh, come on. I'm still here, guys. Just turn it. See if I'm... There we go. <laughs> well, I'm just going to do a quick look back here because I was talking. But we had Moonlight Adventures in here last I seen that posted they were they love keto food. They're down, I'm down 24 pounds. They were having keto chicken pita up. That sounds delicious. And James Cantonese came in, make her turkey spread out of our leftovers and throw it in. Huh? Uh, I know, like, some people take the carcass and make soup out of it. I'm not the big fa biggest fan of turkey soup, but I did keep the carcass. Sorry. It's in the freezer. There's still some meat on it, and I didn't, I didn't pick it bone, <laughs> right down to the bone. There's still some meat on it, so if somebody wants to make soup out of it, they can go ahead and make soup out of it. And we got Carnival Cruise Addicts come in. They did their second live stream. Their first official one was StreamYard tonight. Um, they're interesting to watch. They uh, they have lots. Of, they've been on lots of cruises through Carnival, and they've got lots of videos out about cruising. So that's cool to watch. They just started going live. So and then we had Buzz B come in. Wait, 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 amazing chicken pot pie. Let's see. Saying hello to everybody. <laughs> Holding your tongue just right and getting a signal. Is 
sounds like what you've been going through. Then we have Michelle came in. Yes, I know I got something coming from Busby in the mail. Um, it's a doll or something to send. Just a letter, which will just be a letter with a with a uh, a sticker in it. it. Won't be any big packages because those are expensive to send from one country to the other. Just had Thanksgiving. I would love to have two Thanksgivings. If somebody else bought the other turkey. I don't mind cooking it. You know, somebody else cleaned up. That took me a day and a bit. <laughs> Every day should be Thanksgiving, in my opinion. Uh, it should be Christmas. There's only three times a year I usually make a turkey. Is Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Easter. I know some people do ham on those, but my oldest is not really a fan of ham. I could do like a pork loin, but you know, there's a couple times I did um, a prime rib, but they prefer turkey or chicken. I'll have to watch their live from the beginning. To, I will put the recipe in the um, description after the live stream. I'll type it in as it is in there. Um, you can see how I adjust it. Or I'll put in what, you know, things I substitute sometimes. I The, the recipe is a guide. <laughs> it's a suggestion. That's what I went by. And then I just, when I put the recipes together in that book for my kids, I put that, what this is what the recipe says. And then I put in quotation marks beside or brackets beside it. It's like, this is how what I do. So they can either go by the recipe or they can go what, what I would do by what I do, or they can play around with it and make it their own. Back, my tongue got tired. We got about 14 minutes and then we're going to take that, or we're going to crank up the heat and take that out and put the crescent roll stuff on top. Like I said, you can do it in a a pie shell. That'll probably make several if you're doing a pie shell. Um, I, I went to a, I went to a restaurant that did them in a casserole dish, and just they made a puff pastry on top. But I'm not filming around with puff pastry, so I have been putting a just the Pillsbury crescent rolls and roll it out. And just the little seams I pull together and then I cover it the best I can and put it back in long enough to not to get golden brown and then that's how we eat it. But I won't be eating the crescent roll on top. My son and his girlfriend will probably eat that. Um, I'll eat the I'll eat the other stuff. It's going to reply to a message here. Turkey pot pie. So I'm making turkey pot pie. But like I said, I made these recipe books. This is an old picture of my kids one year at Thanksgiving. It says, quick and easy favorite family recipes. I forget how old my, my youngest was probably. I think he was maybe 15 in that picture. So they would have been 15, 17, 19. But I just, all kinds of fun recipes. And so a bunch of them I've already done on lives. Uh, the easy chicken Parmesan. So I think I did the mushroom chicken. It's really easy too. 
from the pot pie. I haven't done chur uh, I haven't done churros. I need to make churros one of these days. I would need more oil than that though. Beef stroganoff I haven't done live. I did chili. I don't know if I did that live or I did a video. Or I did pictures. I forget what. If I get to the grocery store and get um, some more ground meat, I'll make, I'm going to make chili tomorrow night. So, and I don't know. I might video it <laughs> or have the shepherd's pie. There's a Hawaiian beef casserole. It's like almost like a chili, but instead of being spicy, it's more sweet because it's got pineapple. I've done my sloppy joes. <laughs> I don't know how I've done my pulled pork, but it's, a, it's the easiest thing, too. Um, if I get a pork loin, throw it in the crock pot, and pour root beer over it, just to, enough to cover it, let it cook on low for about six hours, drain the root beer off, take your forks and pull your pork, and then put whatever um, your favorite barbecue sauce is, which I usually throw um, sweet baby rays in it. Although, last time I made it, I didn't, I had a little bit of sweet baby rice, I had a little bit of craft barbecue and a little bit of another barbecue sauce, and so I just mixed them all in there. Uh-oh, Busby's losing. So, so at least speed limits are suggestion. Yeah. Oh no, losing signal again. Let's keep our fingers crossed if Busby doesn't lose the signal. But it's like a pasta recipe. There's the Soup recipes I do. I think the recipe for the uh, no, I don't think the recipe for the Korean ground beef was in here yet. Homemade soup, taco seasoning. It was all these things that they like. Oh, make this one is. Uh, hey B, how you doing? Just got finished getting all their trailer all packed up for the season. There's how they just messaged me. There's do this is one it's called three two one cake and if you're a person that likes just a little something sweet if you combine a cake mix a box of cake mix whatever flavor you like just the powder but and you combine a box of a one step angel food cake mix combine them together keep them in an airtight container it's called three two one cake and you just take a mug, a microwave-safe mug, you put three scoops of the cake mix, like because you combine the two, you take three scoops of that, three, or three tablespoons of that, two tablespoons of water, and you mix it up, and you throw it in the microwave for one minute, and that gives you a mug cake, and that's the easiest. <laughs> we used to do that a lot, but it's not gluten-free, but <laughs> it was handy to have, you know, so you wanted something sweet and you didn't want to make up a whole thing saying it was just like, oh, there's some of that stuff. You know? <laughs> I've thrown chocolate chips in with it sometimes. Now oh, Michelle just going to change her channel name. <laughs> I don't know. We have a homemade pancake recipe that it's not gluten free, but I could probably use the Cali. Cali. Enough. It's got to have the last word. One second. Um, homemade pancake recipe. Now I got some flour in there that I got when we were in the States that's uh, one to one. So you use the same amount as you would for regular flour. And I tried that. Oh, so homemade pancakes is a Amish or Mennonite recipe. That's really easy and it makes nice fluffy pancakes. You've seen me do the ice cream dessert. There's some more recipes I need to add to this. I have a list in here somewhere. Magic cookie bars. Those are easy. Um, the recipe for but the butter tarts I make. And I made those, I know I made those all the way. But I, I've added to their 
the recipes. This one is my youngest son's. Um, he used to go to his one friend back in grade six before his friend moved back to the States. Um, and then hang out with his friend Justin. And yes, V, I have a recipe for Nanaimo bars, but that's in my, my uh, pandemic recipe book. <laughs> Which I need to make some more Nanaimo bars. Anyways, his uh, was at his friend Justin's house. He had a couple friends named Justin, but this one friend just, just before he moved back to the states, um, his mom made a chicken sausage gumbo, and she also made chicken and sausage jambalaya, which my son really liked. So she wrote out the recipes for me for those. So I have those, the handwritten ones in here. And they're kind of special because unfortunately she contracted Lyme disease and had complications of that and passed away. Uh, probably about three, four years ago. So my son has the handwritten copy. I have written out the, typed out the copies and I have them in my book, but I also gave them the conversions. <laughs> Measurement conversions and oven temperature conversions and the safe meat temperature cooking times. And I had a, a, a list of the recipes in order, but they've kind of got messed up. So we got five minutes and then I'm going to. Ah, Dumbo, it's been a while. I need to make some of that stuff too. She gave, gave the instructions how to make the root, the jambalaya. It had a bit of a nip to it, too. Both the jambalaya and the... It had a little bit of a nip to it because I think she put a spi so spicy sausage in there. And then you know, the, the jambalaya can, can add some cayenne if desired. But they are both really good recipes. But something, uh, something I could leave the, the kids. Um, so, you know, years down the road they want. <laughs> oh, what is it in here? They want to know how to make something. You know, when I'm long gone, or you know, if they can't get a hold of me, there was one. I think I think I put it in here. I'm pretty sure I put the recipe in here. Not my easy lasagna recipe. Used to make a really complicated lasagna, and then I found this one on the, the box of Catelli Smart lasagna noodles. So I make that my. But there's no, not the Mongolian beef ramen. This one missing it. Should be at the front. Parmesan. Oh, there it is. So chicken vegetable pasta with rosé sauce. And that was one we made almost weekly. And it was basically um, cooked up my chicken, cut up in like one inch cubes, or you can use leftover chicken or whatever, and then whatever vegetables I use, so mushrooms, I use broccoli. Sometimes I throw in zucchini in and throw that all in together. You get that cooking and then um, you can toss in diced, diced tomatoes, you can throw in spinach, you can throw onion, and then when you got your stuff cooked, then you throw in a can of um, like pasta sauce and a jar of Alfredo sauce and mix that up. And we did that like every week. Sometimes it was Penne noodles, sometimes it was rotini noodles, sometimes it was spaghetti. Like it, 
It was a good way to clean out the fridge too of vegetables. And then Korean bowls or Korean ground beef bowls. Yes, I made that one night for well, we were at up at uh, Lake of Dreams. But I, I know bees kind of sensitive to the spices, so I doubled the sauce recipe, but I only put in half of the um, spices to it. And it's still a little spicy, but it it's such an easy recipe too. That's my go-to for. Uh, I don't have anything else in my head. I got rice and I got ground beef. And then I'll be making Korean ground beef and rice bowls. I'm not going to do that one night this week. I'm going to try. What temperature do I need to crank this up to? Yeah, look for this, the recipe on the slide of the can. Another crescent rolls directions. 375. I'm going to give that a couple minutes while I get this open. Should put an order in for these recipes. Quite a lot of these I have done lives with already, or I've done a video about. I think I did the Korean ground beef once. Yeah, I did. I don't think I've done the Mongolian beef ramen, which is a really easy, um, this like steaks, strips of steak or beef, and then it's a bunch of veggies and a sauce, and you cook up your ramen noodles like you would for, uh, yeah, pop this open. You cook, like, I think I used three packages, three or four, depending. Uh, ramen noodles and then you cook up the the meat and you cook up the veggies and then you and the sauce and you toss it all together with the ramen noodles it is really filling so. that popped open and broke in half Let's see Crank this up to 375 because that's what you cook the crest rolls at. And I'm going to pull it out. So I'll bubbly there. Just give it a little stir. Can find. Oh, use a clean utensil. Just because it's kind of clumped right up in the middle there. Smooth it out. Well, I'm just going to pack up yeah, your, your crescent rolls or croissant rolls. Unless you got to play around carefully with because it's hot. Yes, smart I do. So carefully don't burn myself. One minute warning there. I'm just gonna take these other little pieces and stick them in here. Oops. Move them along the edge. <laughs> to over them, lap, overlap them a bit, pinch them together a bit. Make a little extra on the side here, so. Yeah. 
you can do whatever works for you. I got some spots on the side here where I can see the sauce, so I'm just gonna. Usually I use a round casserole. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I'm going back in. Or, according to the directions for the crescent rolls. Yeah, I hear you. 10 to 12 minutes. Is it this? Oh. Um, no, not a little bit too long. I got 20 minutes. Put that in as 12. Gonna open that up because you're going to lose some heat. Grab this. Put it back in there. And we're going to cook it. At 375 for the 10 to 12 minutes so the crescent rolls cook. Move my garbage. Costco has ramen, rice ramen noodles from her. Oh, that's cool. Crescent rolls, what do we call them? Pillsbury croissants. <laughs> yeah, like, I, quite often I, I buy those for doing other things with. You know, it's really good. If you take those and you're, you can do it on a stick over the fire, or I've done it on the barbecue, or I've taken a skewer, like the, the, um, yeah, kebab skewers. And you just take that and you put it around. Like if you ever see them do bannock, but you can just kind of roll it out, roll it around that, and roll it in um, cinnamon sugar, and then cook it on the barbecue. Delish. <laughs> Not gluten free, but they are good. Yes, kebab. Yeah, exactly those those things. I was thinking. <laughs> Got some up there. The bamboo ones. I also have some metal ones in the. Well, uh, my youngest and I did kebabs one time for dinner, and we had the thing of the crescent rolls, and I had seen that recipe. So, around those around the uh, the skewers, and made those for dessert. And then you make a little bit of um, icing sugar and a little bit of water, and you just drizzle that over top, let it cool a little bit. Mm, delish. I think I have that written in the uh, pandemic cookbook. Yeah, very easy dessert. And very easy if you're at camp or something, if you want to do something. I don't, I've probably talked about it before, but beginning of the pandemic, I had this notebook. And I called it isolation slash quarantine inspired recipes. <laughs> and I put notes in the front. So, you know, somebody looks back on it after I'm gone or whatever. It's like we went out one, about once a week to go get, go to the market and pick up groceries. Um, my son and I took turns cooking. We made up a win weekly meal plan. We usually made it up on Fridays. And then Saturdays, we'd go to the market and go to get groceries. Tried some new recipes we had found online. Because I was like, because why not? <laughs> when you're bored and have lots of time to, to kill. Um, we grew vegetables and herbs that summer. We didn't do a lot of skip the dishes or takeout. So we have a restaurant here called... Yeah, right in my head. It's a burrito restaurant. What is it? I have to... Oh, yeah, Busby lost signal. Darn it. What is the burrito restaurant out here? That's going to drive me crazy. Mucho burrito. See, I didn't even have to get to the point of uh, mucho burrito. And I had never had burritos before. And... A friend from LARP had come down and we decided to go to Mucho Burrito. 
because I never tried it. So, well, I fell in love with <laughs> their food because it was a nice change from going to say McDonald's or Wendy's and all that. I just felt when I went to the fast, the fast food chains, you know, sometimes you get that greasy bleh feel. Whereas I went had the burritos afterwards, it didn't give me that bleh feel. It was so, like healthier and lighter or whatever. Um, and they had a corn and black bean salsa that I just fell in love with. Well, they discontinued that. But I found a recipe I made to how to make it. So I actually started making my own burritos <laughs> at home. So we made burritos while we were on lockdown. <laughs> Found a, 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 a mayo secret sauce type thing, burrito sauce, and then made my own corn and black bean salsa. So easy. It was like a can of black beans, three tablespoons chopped fresh cilantro, a can of corn, quarter cup diced red onions, like really finely diced, because I'm not a fan of red onions or raw onions, so I diced them really fine. A can of Rotel tomatoes that I drained, and a dash of lemon, and tossed it. So that was so good. It tasted just like the stuff at Mitchell Burritos. So I often make my own. The one time I couldn't find the Rotel, I just used uh, like a quarter of a big can. Yeah, no, don't, I don't do Taco Bell very often. And if it is, it's just like the soft tacos. But Taco Bell and KFC have the same effect on my gut. So, <laughs> and that was before finding, figuring out it was gluten intolerant. But it was, it was an experience over the you know, the last few years, you know, so something to do. We were looked up different recipes. That's why I found this Mongolian beef ramen. Uh, what does it have in it? You take a pound of sirloin cut against the grain, and then it's the sauce. It's like cornstarch, sesame oil, uh, minced cloves, so garlic, minced ginger, soy sauce. It, it's got like a lot of the same um, flavors as that green ground beef and then as you got to, uh, they cut up the carrots the same way you can throw broccoli in with it uh, green onions pretty close to the green ground beef but it said you got you're using um, sirloin and you're using uh, ramen instead of rice but it was kind of you know it was a great thing you know looking up recipes, trying different recipes over. Some were disappointing, some, some I wrote down I haven't made yet. But I got lots of pieces of paper in there stuck this way and that way because you know, <laughs> oven, bar oven roasted barbecue pork ribs that I've done, like that we found. Wendy's homemade frosty, that one didn't turn out. That was disappointing because it froze too hard. It wasn't supposed to freeze hard. But so many, so many different things. And there's a bunch in here we haven't tried. Hopefully someday we'll get around to it. I always want to make my own Cuban sandwich, but I never got around to making that. So I got all the different things, recipes to make the different parts of it. But It was quite the experience over the last couple of years, just, you know, or since 2020, just when you couldn't go out to do stuff, except we went out to get groceries, we'd make up the menu, we'd find different recipes. I was like, okay, let's try this. So um, came Saturday morning, okay, we loaded up the car, okay, car running at that time. Um, we'd go to the market. First thing in the morning, get vegetables and stuff like that there. And then we'd go usually to Walmart, you know, where we had our masks on, we had gloves on. We got home, we, we wiped everything down. <laughs> um, now all the things we were doing to, you know, hopefully cut down on germs and stuff. And 
to fight everything down, put things away. And then we had, I have a uh, whiteboard over here, but it's got the days of the week. And we took turns, the alternate days. And then Friday was our day. Sometimes we would order takeout on the Friday. Did adventure with, did you adventure out with different meats, lime, like rabbit, duck, goat? Nope. Um, not really a big fan of goat. I've had, we've had duck and rabbit since his girlfriend moved in. But she cooked, wasn't a fan of the recipes. I have had rabbit. Um, way back when I was involved in scouting, we were at a scout camp and one of the scout troops had caught a rabbit and they cooked it and made rabbit stew. But that was probably when I was in my late teens, mid to late teens. Like, I didn't mind it. it, it to me, in the stew, it just tasted like chicken. <laughs> it was like, everything, everything says, this tastes like chicken. It tastes like chicken. It tastes like chicken. Um, but the, the, I'm sorry, the way his, I'm sorry. And I shouldn't say bad things, but his girlfriend is not a good girl. And I'm sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately, both my kids are with people that don't cook with a lot of seasonings and stuff. So it is, or tend to overcook things. So, thank God I taught my kids how to cook. <laughs> Everybody should learn how to cook, but it's, you know. I learned by watching my mom and my grandmother and you know, close relatives and I, you know, trying different recipes and stuff, following, following a recipe, but then adapting it to your own, you know, trying, like you don't have to do it exactly the way I did it when I put it, in, well, put it in the thing, do what works for you, you know? If you're not a fan of turkey, do a chicken. Plugged into for adventures, trying to change my name. Well, that's uh, you, Michelle. Now look it back at your picture. Which picture? Where's your picture? It worked. It worked. Give me one second. I need this. There we go. Sorry, trying to make you dizzy. And that was browned up, and that's the finished product. So, so kind of not being dizzy again. Stick you back on there. So that's dinner. I'm gonna let sit for a minute. Um, his girlfriend's home, so we we'll went over here. They can get theirs. I will get mine. In a bit. Something going on, I don't know. Not telling me. Got something. Where should I put it? <laughs> Try to change your name. You did it. Yes, Michelle, you did it. So I'm not Cold and rainy. Yes, it's cold and raining. It's well, 47 Fahrenheit. <laughs> so, 
So Michelle Leonardo is now plugged in for adventures. Well done, Michelle. So you can do it. I don't know. She brought home something home for, for uh, Halloween. Sorry for the noise going in and out. I don't know if she got pumpkins or he said no, no, but not pumpkins. I don't know. Okay. Give me a moment, B. What? Coffee. Paste. Come on. Why oh, doesn't that want to work? Coffee. Over here. That. Now paste. No. It looks delicious. It smells delicious too. I uh, I put some aside in a container that I'm going to look cool and I will probably freeze to take to LARP next weekend. And then the other one I will label for my oldest and let them, well, he works in town. So I said to his wife that, you know, he could pick it up some week, night after work and take it home and then they could make it for a dinner for them. Do they want to do the crescent rolls separate or <laughs> put it in a small, I don't know what they have for casseroles. Put stuff there for them for a meal at least. They are very light eaters. Michelle says the only way for me to go on adventures is to see it on YouTube. Well, hopefully maybe someday you can get up to say maybe to uh, Michigan for a meetup or something. That was a, that'd be a shorter adventure going from where you live to Michigan. So we see the world. Oh, this has become an adventure for me being on uh, YouTube. I've met people from all over. Canada, all over the US, Australia, UK. One sec. She wants rocks. <laughs> There's rocks. <laughs> Luckily, there was like uh, out in front, they have like a evergreen bushes and there's cement and there's rocks in between them. There, there's weeds have grown up around them. So go swipe rocks from there and put them back after, after the holidays or after, hey, what is it? Halloween. <laughs> She, her favorite um her favorite holiday is halloween that she likes to decorate for like i said there are see, turn it there i don't know if you can see it there are bats hanging over my head up there, there there's one <laughs> there's bats over my head <laughs> there's there's creepy things in my bathroom there's I don't know if you see that these ones. There's there's bloody footprints on the floor. <laughs> I got a person in my basement. Hello, hello. You said Halloween, so I was like, 
I'm scared. Something, there's bats in the house. <laughs> there's bats in my belfry. <laughs> Really? Yes, good job, Michelle. So oh, there's oh, she likes decorating for Halloween, lines for Christmas, so my uh, Michelle, no judgment. It took me two years and change to get official stickers. So and the box is still at the door to start sending to mail and they're all stuck with the postage and all now i just have to that'll be my next thing if i want stickers see when i'm sick that's all i'll do i'm like i'll just start writing people their messages there is hot pie yay out of the oven like maybe five minutes ago yay I'm hungry. be careful don't burn your tongue Five minutes. Okay, you guys can knock yourself out. We we will all take a piece too. It smells so good. <laughs> I was smelling it when he opened the door. I was like, oh, I'm gonna make this pot pie before I eat the gravy. Well, you and you were at work and he was downstairs and I was like, I might as well talk to my friends while I'm making it. <laughs> Sorry, I was they, late. They got to see it. They got to see the, the finished product this time, rather than me just making the turkey dinner and going, I'll put a picture later, short up later, what the turkey looked like. <laughs> they got to see the finished product. This is where we say, YouTube, where's smell-o-vision option? Yeah. I will pay for the smell-o-vision option. <laughs> well, I came home from being with my friends yesterday, and she had made cider, and I walked in the door and was like, it smelled great. <laughs> My mouth just watered when you said that. It's like cider. It didn't turn out as well as she she had hoped, but it it's it, it really <laughs> smelled like fall in here. <laughs> so lay off the clothes. Maybe don't put clothes in next time. Maybe like two. You got a little bit dripping down the side there. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. It just gives like don't burn your tongue. You want to enjoy. <laughs> so yeah. You know what we do? You know when you cut apples? Because, you know, I have a lot of apple cores. I just mm -hmm. top them off with water, a pinch of ginger, and you bake that, and everybody's like, what you making? And I'm like, I'm just clearing the air. Just clearing the air. It, it smelled like fall and Christmas when we came in here last yeah. night. And I do, like, Christmas morning, I'll buy a jug of apple, apple cider, cider, and I'll just put it in the crock pot, and I'll throw some of my... Um, on guard essential oil in and i'll throw some sliced uh oranges in there and, just, yes. and that's you know christmas morning some of them are having coffee i don't drink coffee so i'm sitting there with a nice steamy jug of cider and just like <laughs> you know michael lands my bestie when i had m23 said can we get cider she goes oh cider like, you are so my bestie <laughs> <laughs> so in the morning i was like because we don't do coffee so it's like cider she's like yeah. Today is the one year anniversary of being admitted to the hospital because of having a stroke. It's been a long year of tests and procedures. You've come a long way, Michelle. And Michelle, I'm so happy. I'm, you made I'm it. Glad you're, I'm glad you're uh, okay. I'm glad you're still here. Love you, girl. We have a one year anniversary today, too. Was it today that we pinched each other's? Today we stepped on the uh, <gasps> on the cruise. It's so true. <laughs> Why you it? It was up in my memories, but I, I was like, I was wait. I posted it in my Facebook. It's like when you're because I had one of the, the cruise ship. I had one of uh, the Helping Hands logo. And then what was the other third picture I had? Well, like, Michael, oh, one year. One year. <laughs> I think I should release a short as we're speaking or a video. Since it's our one year anniversary, I have so many videos that felt bloated. I was like, man, let's do this. Uh, they would be under videos, I think. I was trying to remember that third picture. My brain just kind of went, I know there was three pictures. There's three pictures. Okay, here we go. World's best magician. Sounds like it. 
There we go. I just pushed save. It's it's live in the world. It's live in the world. That's world's sick. best magician. In one year since the first helping hands for cruising cruise. We'll be joining another helping hands for cruising cruise in 372 days. So I had that logo picture. Helping hands cruise. One year ago today, beautiful morning in sunny Miami. Oh, that was looking out Miami. our window. And the other one is hardly to believe it's hard to believe it's been a year, and that was a picture of the uh, the horizon. So, so that means yesterday we were frog. We were toad jumping or frog jumping in the traffic. That was the day before, wasn't it? Yesterday was the meet. A year ago, yesterday was the meetup. So yeah, we were. That's why we went for our Cuban sandwich. Oh, playing Frogger through the yeah. Frogger, that's it. Toad. Oh, that was a, that was a good Cuban sandwich, and I want to be able to make a good Cuban sandwich. Really, guys, you got food on the burger. <laughs> Never mind. This is the mess, mess I get to clean up after. Um, hey, a Muncie channel. Welcome in. Hello. Two minutes before your break is over. Working hard. Nice. Hey, let's say people bake cookies in the house that is having an open house. I did, I did that. Wasn't. I didn't get around to helping an open house. My house went on the market on Wednesday and sold on Friday. What? Wow. That's insane. Yeah, 48 hours I had a had a, an offer. Actually, it wasn't even 48 hours I had the offer. But then I, he wanted to lowball me by 10 grand. And I went, 10 grand, 20 grand. Uh, and I was like, no, I'll meet you in the middle. We, go, well, we, go, we would agree to meet in the middle if I threw in the appliances. Which I did. <laughs> Am I frozen? No. I wish I had my, my fridge from People want me on their negotiating team? People want me on their negotiating team because I'm a negotiator. I just, I wish, you know, Hindsight, I wish, or maybe it was foresight. <laughs> no, I'd say, I wish I had held on to that house. I wish I had, you know, thought it through a little more. But my oldest had moved out, and I knew I couldn't cover the bills between me and my youngest. So I knew eventually I would have to put up the bill. And I, I just kind of rushed through things, and I kicked my hiney now that I did it. But and you couldn't re, what is that word? Renegotiate your mortgage? I had already done that once. Oh. When I, after my parents passed and I almost lost the house at one point and I renegotiated re the mortgage. That's what I'm saying. That. Um, it wasn't the mortgage payment, it's all the other freaking bills. Yeah. Like gas and hydro and I should have taken, you know, taken in a student or something because <laughs> I had a spare bedroom when my oldest moved out. Hello, Lacey. Welcome in. Welcome in. Lacey's here. Young girl. But, you know, it's just like a lot of them in the area were going for around the 200 grand mark. Yeah. I listed at 199.9 and he wanted me to go 179. I settled for 189. I should have stuck it out a little longer, but oh well. I can't change the past. But I could tell you that when we, our neighbor beside us during the pandemic, it was crazy, right? Mm hmm. And they did the same. He's like, this is the number I want. The girl was like, she came back three times asking something lower. He said, no. And then guess what? His house sat on the market for three months. 
That's like 90 days. That's almost like a suicide note. But then after that, he took it off the market. Two weeks later, put it back on the market. He changed a few things and he got way more than he asked. He requested. Because people were like, I don't want to deal with all these things. Like the water bills of this because we're in a condo. Who is most guy? You took a lot of the billing. That's why when you do individual, there's no issue. Everybody gets everything. Lacey, how are you doing, darling? How's Worth How are going? Fishing tournament? Concert tonight. Who's who who's the headliner for the concert? So I got the ins insides. Mm. Actually. Oh, so hot. Question, did you put extra butter on the croissant? Nope, I just threw it on top. Oh. I take a little bit out of this container because I want to be able to freeze it. It's too full to freeze. It will expand the pop the top off. Mm -hmm. That's why my one inch space. Yep. So I'm having pudding. I want a dessert. Well, then, uh, when my oldest bought their they bought their house last a year ago in May, I was looking at the comparable prices to what our old neighborhood, and I'm thinking, yeah. I thought the house go for just under two hundred, and the houses in that area were going for five forty nine. Yep. And I was like, crap! I had hung onto it and sold it at that point. I could have, you know, made a tiny little sum above what I owed on it and been able to give both of the kids some money towards, you know, paying off their student loans and putting down payments and stuff. Yep. Buying a vehicle, whatever they wanted to do. It's funny you say that because that's, that's a reality, unfortunately. My uncle told us when we were kids. Real estate rarely goes down. Yep. And he goes, that's the real truth of real estate. So, yeah, you will have the, like, the, the crash of, was it 2008, 2009 in the U.S., but it's always going to bounce back no matter what. Like, because we're a local band saddle up. Woohoo! Kelly, yeah. like, it smells so good. Well, it's gone. It went right way up from when my parents bought it. Oh, yeah. I can imagine what they paid for it. What they paid for it, we pay, pay more for a vehicle now than what they paid for the house. Mm -hmm. They bought that house for 22000 Well, look at Steve's house. It's six times the price. You do the math. Six times. I know it's our house, but I still say it's his because he did the purchase. I know, I've been thinking a lot lately in this site. This place is okay, but like dealing with their property management has been a pain. <laughs> yeah. You know, seeing how things go in the, in the future. Near, near future or further future. Might, might stay, might look at something else, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's funny you said in the future, because I said to Steve, I'm moving to Germany. <laughs> Steve's like, what? I said, I'm just saying, when I retire, I'm not opposed. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, seriously? I was like, I don't know. Why not? Worst comes to worst, we'll move. I, I, I would like to win the lottery so I can just travel. <laughs> I find the right job that I can pay, that I can just travel. Forget travel. Just move to a city and save. We're here for a year. Sign my one year lease. One year I travel in this section. Guess what? A year later, we're moving again. I swear, to me, this is going to be like. So I travel, I live, I work, and I do. 
you know. Travel and then I come back to do my X number of months or whatever I have to do back in Ontario to keep my health insurance and then. <laughs> but that's when I retire, so I'm going to be a little bit older. But, but yes, I wouldn't be, be opposed to being a snowbird. Me either. I just stay in Canada for the su summer months, depending on when summer decent months came. Like May, so May to September or October. And then let me cruise or travel. Work, work on a cute little hobby farm on somebody's hobby farm. I'll be... Weeding and pulling radishes and carrots, I'm fine with that. Mm. Speaking of farm, I close up my RV. I had bought big plants, like when I say big plants, like over two feet high of these basil. I made, I got three of these plants, so I spent $18. I did, I don't know how many jars of basil, pestle. Ah, oh, pesto, sorry. And I left the trailer. Two out of the three plants still had enough that I could have made at least two jars of basil, of uh, pesto. Wow. But I was just so exhausted. I just looked at them and I'm like, you know what? If it doesn't freeze this week, I'll make an email and I'll come and pick you up next week. But I was just like, you know, when you're just done, I was just done. This was me. I'll see you next week, maybe. <laughs> what a slap uh, Adventures of Traveling Mike picture he put on his Facebook of a couple of Adirondack chairs with that S word all over it. It's coming for my friends in the north. Bite your tongue, it's not here yet. Nope, nope. We, 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 we won't have it for another three weeks at least. It's all good. Yay! Uploading! Yum. Yeah, uploading. I said that one, that one of those grains had some nip to it. I gotta bring Lacey to her first heavy metal concert. I'm just saying. She thinks I'm crazy. Get me to heavy metal concert. Say, no one knows she's already been. <laughs> She'll be like, wow! I was crank. I turned the radio on and my radio is always loud. And Steve was like, <laughs> so I was like, babe, I'm going to put the volume down, but it'll still be loud for you, but it'll be very loud, low for me. But I need to listen to the song. And he's like, what is it? I was like, you don't know this song. He's like, what kind of a question is that? And it was Metallica's new song. And it's literally like seven minutes long. Steve was like, is the song ever going to end? I was like, don't stop greatness. Just don't stop greatness. <laughs> uh, about five more minutes and then I'm going to call this, folks. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, I bought this big sweatshirt hoodie. You know those um oversized hoodies like Miranda has? What are they called? I forget. Anyways, I got something like that, but it's it's kind of more like a tunic because it goes up to my knees. And it has, a, it has like a, a pouch, a kangaroo pouch. And it's like made out of velvet and so soft and warm. And so I'm like, I wore this outside instead of a winter jacket. Uh, but then when it started to rain, I was like, oh, this defeats the purpose. How was it? On a scale of one to ten. I'm still consuming it. Still, still consuming. Is that good? We need a second round. Good enough that he's going to eat it. <laughs> good enough that he has to eat it twice. Oh, one of my Instagram people I follow, he's like, okay, you people in America, you got to explain this. And the guy's walking down the hall in a hotel room. He goes, I just need to ask this important question. While I have you, let me just go show you. And you answer. And then he shows the ice machine. He goes, 
You have one on every floor. Why do you need an ice cream machine? An ice cube machine on every floor. And I write back, well, when you want a midnight snack, it's zero calories. But you get the crunch. And during summer, it's really hot, so you cool down super fast. I was just like, well, you yeah, some people that are going to hit bullets. I was following one of those on the highway. This car. I used to crunch ice. Like, that was my thing. But then the dentist was like, not good for your teeth, honey. I was like, my sister in law only did that when she was pregnant. Oh, yeah. Start crunching ice, ice again. You look at it and it's like, something you're not telling us? <laughs> I have sensitive teeth, so that's why it's not good. But it's okay. It's so good. It's so delicious. Nothing beats the crunch of an ice cube. That was tasty. It oh smells God. good. I was trying to scratch and sniff my hand. me. The easiest, easiest way to uh, use that leftover for turkey or chicken. Like I said, it doesn't have to be leftovers. You can bring home a rotisserie chicken and do it. You can do it yeah. Two or, two or three uh, chicken breasts and cook them and cut them up and do it. I have potatoes in the in the cupboard. I had carrots and celery from the mobile market. That was like, there we go. Well, I had got some carrots the week before weekend or end of the week before uh, Thanksgiving, and it was a huge bag of them. But I was know some of them were getting some spots on them, so. After I get brought vegetables home from the mobile market, I sat down and everything in the fridge pulled all the vegetables out. Okay, this is garbage. This is this can be chopped up and thrown in the freezer. This can be chopped up and used for the hut. I had carrots cut up from pot pie. I had carrots I got cut up in the matchsticks for doing the Korean ground beef. And then I, got, I cut the other ones up just in coins, which he made stir fried vegetables and rice last night after I went to bed. Still waiting for the video. He's yeah. seven away from a hundred, Michael Ann. God, Ellsworth, we're gonna make this happen. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm already subscribed. Yep. <laughs> pretty sure I am. My favorite. Oh. There's so many good videos on here. Oh, look at them. Mike Kalan's Glow Mama's live. Wow. I think <laughs> I know that chick. Yep, I am already subscribed. Same here. I make sure I make sure I do the I try to do this once a month. Go through my subscriptions because sometimes I get booted out. I don't know why. Yep. Well, that's happened to me on Facebook. So I can huh? I was on Facebook? I had a couple of people that I was like, I was sure I was, you know, Facebook friends with that person. And then I was like, really? Like, what? I don't think they would give me the boot. Like, and same happened with my youngest and my daughter-in-law. <laughs> like, Hello? It's okay. He, he, he says that she unfriended him and was like, Maybe it was something else, but I don't know. Maybe it was. That's okay. I'm not Facebook friends with the girlfriend. I've sent requests, and it's like, okay, whatever. I'm not Facebook with my mom, so it's whatever. Whatever. And, and I'll learn the news on Facebook. Anybody watching the replay, I just don't accept every anybody. I have to know people to accept them on Facebook and so don't be hurt if I don't accept your Facebook friend request. So try, things are trying to be separate. I do have a channel for my my page here, but I don't get in there a lot. I want to uh, I want to redo that at some point, but it's just complicated. Well, I try to do it. Did I get a message? Did you get a message? It's not uploaded yet. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I told my Ann. You don't know my mailing address or you haven't had supper in my house it's pretty hard to get you on my facebook 
I haven't had supper at her house. I do know her mailing address only as of my birthday a year ago. And we've been friends for three years now. Pretty close. Yeah. So. Michael Ann knows the reasons why. And I got to her driveway last year, this year. Well, that, that, was, that was a big thing. <laughs> It's just because, put it this way, my friends are eclectic and sometimes I don't want to push bub Bubbles boundaries. I have really, just don't like us on Facebook. Uh, excuse me, I'm Facebook friends with Stacy. I don't know, I'm like, let me go on Facebook, I don't know. I am Facebook friends with Stacy, I was. I see the problem is I was off of Facebook for four years. So yeah. during the pandemic, when I wrote 220 days till Christmas, people like my YouTube, my Facebook went insane because people were like, she's back. I was like, oh. I am Facebook friends with Stacy. There, I, will, I will admit to one thing I do do on my Facebook. I sort the fr I sort the friends. I have some that are acquaintance and some that are as close friends. Yeah, I just put Stacy on at Ellsworth. That's a big thing. The, the, the difference is the acquaintances can't see all my stuff. Oh, they see they can see some of my stuff, but they can't see all my stuff. Because some of my stuff is li listed as friends, including acquaintances, and some of it's listed as. This gotcha! See, I need to do that then. Because it was just you have to pick on me. <laughs> it's okay. If I didn't like you, you wouldn't be my friend on Facebook. But I I respect and love you and your girls and your wife so. It's like there's just some of my relatives there putting me acquaintance. <laughs> there are also some, and the people that have been my close friends sometimes get demoted to acquaintance, and then that's some, for those people, that's the next step is going bye bye. <laughs> if they've been my close friend and get demoted. <laughs> I know, you gotta be careful. With, yeah. Like, my aunt is about 16 years older than me. Yeah. And she posts all kinds of stuff and wonderful lady, but she's in her later 70s now. And I'm not saying anything bad about Americans or the military, but she gets so many comments on some of her posts from men that are supposedly posted shown as u.s military but it could be a scam or more than likely using yeah. the person's post so you know um i like your stuff uh, what, what you're posting you no know, send me a freight facebook friend request and she knows that like she <laughs> but i get so tired of seeing it on there it's like would you please stop I go on and I report it, but it's like I'm trying to keep an eye on her because her daughter, my cousin, is way up at none of it <laughs> and quite busy. So that's like, yeah. Oh, like I told my client, if I don't meet you in many, oh, that's yeah. sad. That is very sad. Lovely. I'm more I'm more on Instagram. It's just my because I get to do silly videos and sing my heart out, even I'm if I can't still, sing. Still trying to figure that out. <laughs> I've done a few things on there, but then, but then I get working more on my shorts and stuff like that. And I haven't done a lot with my shorts and my videos this past week. I was hoping my little road trip with my friends yesterday I would have seen stuff, but it was rainy and cold and yucky, and so we really didn't go anywhere. And we both had crappy dinners. What were the odds? 
<laughs> both had crappy steak. <laughs> we both had crappy steak, and we're like, how can you bring... Okay, I'm sorry. After going through chemo, my sense of smell is heightened. So if I smell blood, I don't feel appetized to eat blood. It's just, it's just the thing. I'm a woman. I already deal with that once a month. I don't want to deal with on my plate. You know, I'm just, sorry for the graphicness, but that's it. So I always say, can I have my steak? Not well done. Very well done. Like put me some char marks. I'm a very happy girl. Then you put some butter on top. I'm fabulous. I'm happy. Nothing makes me happier. She doesn't want any pink in there. Well, very well done. Means, you know, the thing is, so then I put the butter and it goes, it sucks in the butter. It gets back moist. And I just, of course, always, Ellsworth. Yeah. I'm saving up for something special for those girls. I'm saving. Might take me a while. I already sent two boxes. I'm saving. I'm a giver because I always say when I die, people know how I felt. I started, no watching, I started watching Ellsworth when he was chatting in um, Chaos Divers. And I watched them. And I love... I love the video, and I was it Brooke or Chelsea? I think it's Brooke, the one flying across the restaurant and threw a koala hug on uh, yes J Jacob. <laughs> so <I'm not laughs> I love that. Or when he's when you they met up with um, uh, Rick of uh, Wolfman. Oh, they met Wolfman. They met Wolfman four one one. Like I went bowling, I think, with with them. I was like, nice. You know what I want to do with them? You ready? I want to do some tie dye. Just saying. I want to do some tie dye. Sounds like a plan for a road trip. Road trip. Another stateside road trip. They're not. They're not terribly far. Rep was broke. Okay. <laughs> huh. What state again? Pennsylvania. That's not far, but it's a bit yeah. cold. So. Hey, we can go to my favorite yeah. store in the world in Pennsylvania. Do you know what my favorite store Ooh. in the world is, Ellsworth? Come on. You got to know which one it is. I told everyone my girls give bear hugs. Well, so does, so does she. And <laughs> uncontrollably long. So I'm like... 10 minutes? No problem. I can just hold on for 10 minutes. It's just no problem. I swear. I was probably a cuddle bear in a previous life. And see, right now, I'm probably soft because I feel like velvet. So, you know, I'm kind of trying to be a bear. Yeah, it does look like cozy. I said to Steve, he tried it on because I got the biggest size because I was like, why well, am I going to pay three times the price when I could get this? And this is longer. And it kind of looks like a dress. Kind of, you know, I wore this in the restaurant and I was like, were well, you going to judge me? I look kind of cute, actually. It's the one family I follow in Utah. Like, they're all, like all four kids have, like, they're like an oversized hoodie, but there's like just thigh length. And yeah. quite often they'll see the, the boys, boys, I haven't seen the little girl with it on too often, but. Like the younger boy, quite often just cuddled up and reading or whatever. I just like a hoodie because I don't have much hair on my head. So I'm always, or a beanie as you guys call it, but we call it a tick. It's a tick. Or quite as often, my client would say, took. <laughs> quite often it's I throw all my, uh, my hoodies on. Well, I have my black fleece one on yesterday and today. Take the dog out and I can throw the hood oh. on. Oh my God, Carl! Ellsworth, that's on my bucket list. That's item fifty-nine. <laughs> Just to say I did it. But I have to put my feet in the water too. No shoes, no rubber boots. I have to have my feet in the water. Sean! No, Sean S. Good evening. Good to see you. It's been a while. Long time no see. Now I want dessert. It's over in the fridge. I can only 
offer you a snack pack. Please hold on to something when meeting the girls. They might knock you over. <laughs> Just ask Jacob. Yep. My Michael Ann was holding on to the car when I hugged her. <laughs> <laughs> we just brace ourselves. <laughs> Put yourself against the wall. <laughs> oh my god! I just remember that video. When Brooke is like, it's like yes. right around him. <laughs> That's why I said those are beautiful people because they know who they are, and there's no question about it. And I'm like, that's why I say, I'm not afraid to say. I used to, at one point, I used to have a shirt that said, free hugs, just ask. And people would literally ask. And they'd be like, I'm done. I said, are you sure? Because I can still do this for another 10 minutes. I'd be like, okay. <laughs> because some people don't get hugs from people. So I'm like, if that's my, my cure to the world, I will. Sorry to hear that, Sean. Are you still dealing with that kind of crap? Hey, Sean, I'm feeling your pain. <laughs> Let's take it twice today. Oh, my one friend yesterday, we the one store we went in, which one was it? The first one. And we got to like going through all the different sections and they get to the back corner. There was essential oils. There was incense. There was soaps and bath bombs. Thank God they kept it all in one corner. So we tried to avoid that corner, but then we both had to go to the bathroom. And it's beside. Well, it was it was far enough um, to go around, get in there. She went in first. It's like I've already gone once, like before we left the, other, the restaurant. But she hadn't. Uh, yeah, she said she'd wait till we got there. So she went in. I hear her coughing and coughing and coughing, and she come out. It's like something's bothering my asthma. She had to end up doing her puffer. I went in there, sat down, doing my business, look across. And there's a bunch of incense sticks stuck in the this jar in the corner on the bathroom counter. Do you throw in the garbage? I wanted to. That's what I would do. I, I literally, I did my business, flushed, came out, and as I went in my purse and pulled out my hand sanitizer, I'm like, I'm not staying in there long enough to wash my hands. I'll do the sanitizer thing. Yo. <laughs> yep. I have, I have into washrooms that have that and I've actually taken the time to throw it in there. Look at this one of the Sean S, Ellsworth, Michelle, with all people that I have met and not through the diving community. Mm -hmm. I will say yeah, Jacob with uh, chaos divers, but I've not met the other one before that, but this is where I met all these people. <laughs> Oh, season two. Two videos are up. And <laughs> plugged in for adventures is Michelle Leonardo. Sean. Michelle! She's, she's finally, plugged she's, in! She's finally changed her name. Now we just gotta see, see uh, some stuff on your channel, Michelle. Michelle, how long has it been that I was been giving you suggestion for your title? At M23, we sat down. She has video because we recorded her dip. Her dip video. So, you know, just saying, Michelle. Just saying, Michelle. So glad you did it. Now you got to post a video. I give you the challenge of once a month. Psst, do a drive through. Oh, oh, oh. Going to put the volume down. <laughs> This looks like a rock star. Is this a rock band there? Dessert time. Dessert time. Oh, one of four. I'm, I'm, at, I'm at number one. I'm going to be the first one. It's not for you. I already fed you. No bake, chocolate, oatmeal, macaroons. Mm. But you're gluten free. <laughs> yeah, macaroons are one of my favorites. But they're commonly referred to in my family, my cousins, as poop balls. <laughs> Hello. Is that you or me? That was you. Holy crap. I know what that is, though. 
That's oatmeal. Oh, crap and make me jump. Oatmeal and coconut and cocoa and so using butter or shortening, I use coconut oil. We we call them cat turds. Seriously, I get up to check it. <laughs> ah, need flashlight. V, you never did say what your favorite store is. Michelle, say. Hey, I fed you, dog, and you can't have chocolate. So no. <laughs> favorite store to wear. <laughs> Oh my god, my heart is beating. One moment, please. Sounds like a smoke detector. That one needs to open laundry. Somebody just died at some point in time to clean up the trash That's drives me nuts. Well, that just gets wet. I can smell the odor on it. Somebody better clean up the... Uh... Can't have chocolate. That's too bad, Sean. Can't have chocolate. Cool if I have some more. You can, I can clean up. There's not a whole lot of the stuff left, but there's a lot of the topping. <laughs> I put aside a small one for myself to take to freeze and take to LARP, and one for Nikki and Faith. Yeah, there you go. And I'll send the other uh, crescent roll with that so they can do what they can make it like I did, or they can just make crescent rolls and have them with them. I love your pot pie. Thank you. Well, if it didn't feel like talking to myself, so I decided to talk to my friends while I was doing it. Hey, Kelly. And I'll post the, the recipe in the description later, so if anybody wants to make it, they can make it. That's what I've done with a lot of the recipes. Babe, you want more? Hello, Nick P. B, I sent you an email. Can't wait for May of next year in Toronto. Yep, we'll see you next May in Toronto. B, I had to attend to a sound like a detector of some type beeping. They sing Country Girl Shake by Luke Bryan. And Don't Stop Believing by Journey. I love Don't Stop Believing. I have um, a bit of a video from the cruise on the mega deck party. And our cruise director was awesome. Um, Cookie and Jonathan Adams. Cookie gave a speech about, you know, we've been through so much over the last couple of years and all that. It was very inspirational. And then he ends up when he just says, don't stop believing. And then all of a sudden, um, the DJ started playing, don't stop believing. It's like, oh, <laughs> I have that on there. Um, I have music over top of it because that scram kind of scrambles the analog that there so they don't co didn't copyright it. But I love that song. Oh, Journey fan, anyways. <laughs> I'm sorry. Flying from Minneapolis to Montreal, I looked up what smoke the smoked beef sandwich you were talking about. Yeah, Montreal smoked meat is is delicious. That's why Montreal steaks place. But, um, Montreal's beautiful. I I just I don't speak French very well, so the only time I've been in Montreal. I was there for a year from age four to about age five. And the other time I was in Montreal, I was driving through it, going out to the East Coast. But I'm going to spend two nights in Montreal, then take one of the quarter trains from Montreal to Toronto. Cool. 
have a nice introduction to the eastern side of Canada since I've only been to, ever been to Vancouver. I love the train station. Because you're in Montreal, you gotta try cheese. Yep. You gotta try poutine. But uh, yeah, Union Station in Toronto is beautiful too. It's an old station. Hey, our friend Nick drinks, right? Uh, I believe so. I know he had a little stuff when he was over in Ireland. I know he had some stout, so he can try a Caesar, a Canadian Caesar. Hmm. He can try a Caesar. I'll have to meet up and go for dinner. Yep, when he's in Toronto. Somewhere, somewhere different than Jack Astor, so. Jack yeah, Astor. Go Jack Astor. I'll try somewhere else. <laughs> Oh, Toronto, Toronto's a great place to visit. That's not somewhere I want to live, and I don't like traveling downtown. So, we we'll figure out when you're coming. We'll we'll find somewhere to park and take a bring them to the distillery section, and we can go on those segways. That's so much fun. I can figure we meet up, or we can even we can even take the subway down to Union Station and meet you at Union Station. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> He's like, yes, I drink. See, that's what I thought. So then you can try Caesar. Trust me. Not more Canadian than that. If you like it spicy, you can ask for spicy. Canadian version of a Bloody Mary. But it tastes a bit different. Yeah. Right. Two to three pints a day of Guinness in Ireland. Not a fan of Guinness, but hey. <laughs> it's each his own. So my beep beep was my CO2 machine. I got a good uh, what's the drink that the kid one of the kids had? Uh, um Irish car B O M B S. Oh yeah. We're dropping a shot of there's a shot of Bailey's or a shot of Jameson in a, a glass of Guinness. Ooh. I forgot what that is. I know I know my adopted son. Are you trying to tell? Uh, 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 uh. What am I getting another? I thing? tried Guinness once a long time ago, and I was like, I thought it was like molasses meets beer. It was really weird. Irish. Car. How close am I from Niagara Falls? About three, two, three hours. I don't know. Let me Google it. I'm Just about three hours from Niagara Falls. You're three hours, so then I must uh, be close. Irish car kaboom. <laughs> or Irish slammer or Irish kaboom shot or Dublin drop. It's a cocktail similar to a boiler maker made by dropping a shot of Irish cream and Irish whiskey into a glass of Irish stout. I'm an hour and a half. So, Michael Ann, do you want Steve to chit chat with you a bit while I go get the battery? Because the beep beep machine is going to go all night if I don't put a battery in it. You can. I don't mind talking to Steve. What? She, she doesn't mind talking oh, to you, she said. Oh, he heard oh, something. Else. I took a picture I was going to send to Steve. I better not do that while he's live because I don't want him swearing on my live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's going to break digestion if he doesn't swear on you all. <laughs> okay. Stacy wants to go to Niagara again, and I've never been. Well, if you go to Niagara, Falls, yeah, get the passports and come to the Canadian side, and maybe, you know, we can I arrange to meet up with you and the girls. Yeah, and you see way more on the Canadian side. Ask Kenny. Okay, I'm loose. Okay. I'll be back. I okay, you ready? The, I brought the thingy with me. You're gonna have to snap in three. Three, two, one. Oh, you can ask if it's just people who would probably be offended. Oh, I can't. Yeah, yeah. That was I was saying kaboom or whatever. <laughs> so I'm not a fan of the stout, so or whatever. Hello. <laughs> Lacey okay. would say crazy. Stuff. Okay. 
I look forward to meeting Steve as well in Toronto next May. Hopefully it works out that we can all meet. So that Saturday we're meeting up in Montreal. I'm sending my folks on a full day bus right. to Toronto down to my Niagara Falls. That way they can spend the day together because I've already been there. Well, I was at Niagara Falls. I haven't been there for a while, but I was there last, last May because we went to Toronto on the weekend. And then I went to Niagara Falls a few days later with Kenny and friends. That was a lot of traveling. I was tired of being in the car that week. <laughs> but Steve was an awesome driver downtown Toronto. Oh. <laughs> More patience than I have. <laughs> Last time I drove downtown Toronto, I had gone down to visit my adopted son and went out for lunch. Took him back to the house he's, he was living in. And while we had been out for lunch, there would have been a windstorm. So I left. After dropped him hit off, I left. And my GPS said, okay, go this way. Well, I go, what, go to that way. And there was a great, big, huge tree down over the road. So I try to go around the block. My GPS recalculates and sends me down Young Street which is a main road in uh, Toronto, right into downtown Toronto. So it's like, okay, I want to get in on either, I want to get on the Gar Gardner Expressway, like a, one of the highways to to get out of there. Well, to do that, I'm going to get onto Lake Shore Boulevard. Well, then I'll get down the onto Lakeshore Boulevard, there is, was it a Blue Jays baseball game or was it a Maple Leafs hockey game? It was Friday, it was Friday like supper time. Anyways, all these people downtown because they're going to the game and then they're trying to cross this road too and they're like, I was over an hour late checking into my hotel. So then they decided to charge me an extra hundred bucks. But even though I had called and said I was going to be a little bit late, they still charged me. We go, we'll have to meet up. It just hard to travel with all the girls' meds and stuff. I understand that. I'm going to say, no, Toronto. Toronto, Montreal, Niagara Falls, been all those places. Like I said, Montreal, I just drove through the last time when that was back in 89. And, um, I'm back. Yay, welcome back. Yeah. Sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. Stuck horse traffic, yep. I don't like driving in Toronto if I don't have to. Lakeshore Boulevard down by oh. down by the uh, Rogers Center. I think it was the Blue Jays game. Yeah, because part of the part of the road was blocked off. If we're still talking about the same thing before I left. Well, the, that, that was that Blue Jays. Yeah, because was it Blue Jays or the? Oh. No, it was hockey. I I was gonna say I think it was at the a ACC. It wasn't the Sky Dome. It was hockey when we, we yeah, were out. Yes, because, I believe so. Because they were in the playoffs. Yeah. I don't think it was baseball. But when I was down a few years before that, there was a baseball game, and I got stuck on Lakeshore Boulevard underneath the Gard underneath the Gardner Expressway there, and people trying to get across and traffic, and I was like. <laughs> so it's like, I'm glad you were driving. You were, pa you were patient than I was, but. Uh, like, if I go to Toronto again, I would rather be park somewhere else and take a subway down. Well, that's what a lot of people do. Yeah, I've heard that. 
the only time that I went into uh, Toronto on purpose was for the air show uh, at the CNE. Mm -hmm. But then when I found out that they had an air show in London, I'm like, okay, we'll just go to the London one and I don't have to pay so much money. And it was a lot more expensive in Toronto. I think it was something like $175. And that was that was discounted because I was a member on uh, uh, the air show list, so it was about two hundred and seventeen something dollars per person. Yeah, plus parking, which was back then thirty to forty dollars. Yeah, and then uh, I mean that that two hundred dollars got you into the CNE as well, so you could go. But uh, I'm not really big on the CNE. I just wanted to see the air show. And in London, it's right now, I think, almost $200 for a car load. So if I had five people in the car, you guys figured out 200 divided by five people. A lot cheaper. Yeah. <clears throat> we went to, uh, I've never been to the CNE. These two went in August for her birthday. Yeah. Closest, closest I've been to the CNE and e has been going to Medieval Times and to, to the... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. The Medieval Times was pretty cool. Yeah, I've been uh, there twice. Yeah. We've only been there once, but V had a really bad reaction, so we had to take care of her for a second. But, uh, I went with my youngest grade 8 class trip. That was a class trip and a half. Holy crap. We went, we started at medieval times. Mm. Went from medieval times to the zoo. And then went from the zoo to Wonderland in one day. Oh. Like we were at medieval times for lunch and we we're at a Wonderland around supper time. We didn't spend a whole lot of time at the zoo. I'm like, I've taken my kids down to the zoo and we go at 11 o'clock in the morning when they open and stay till like supper time and then leave and come home. <laughs> like, yeah. The three different places. Like. See, and I'm not big on the CNE. It's like a fair kind of a vibe. Mm -hmm. And I, I was never really into fairs. The zoo is also not really interesting to me. Wonderland when I was a kid. Yeah. But now it, yeah. What's the point? Hard, courtyard in downtown Toronto. I miss it right on the number one subway from the CN Tower. Very close to downtown, yep. Are you going to yeah. go up the CN Tower, Nick? Oh, Nick, Nick's yeah. over there. Oh, cool. It's coming in uh, May to Toronto. Or before he heads out west and then to Australia. Oh, my gosh. That's where Nick... He is going. He's flying, flying from Minneapolis to Montreal, then go Montreal to Toronto. Huh? He likes so, traveling on a train. Flying Minneapolis to, to Montreal, and then back to Toronto. And then he's taking the train from Montreal to Toronto. Uh. -huh. And then he's taking another train from Toronto, the the Canadian one across to Vancouver. Okay. Do you fly? No, I think he flies was from Vancouver to somewhere else, and then somewhere else to Australia. And then he's got like several weeks of train trips and that, and then he's meeting up with Sean and Lana. And... Man, that's a long trip or a long flight to Australia, like nineteen some odd hours, if it's nonstop. I don't know if I could be crammed in a in a plane for nineteen hours. I'm pretty sure. The stewardesses would throw me off the plane before we got across the ocean. Does this come with a parachute? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I found the flight that we did, which was what three hours by the two and a half hour mark. I was I was done. It's like no, let me off this this tin can, please. Watching visit videos about visiting Montreal about crazy. All the signs are in French. Yep. Yeah. The things I know I say in French are hello and thank you. And I was flying direct from Vancouver to Brisbane. But I heard bad things about the airline I'm on, Air Canada. 
Yeah, don't talk to me and Steve and put hair candle on that. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it got us there safely. The flight, there's nothing wrong with the way they flew. It was fine. Um, I mean, the seats were uncomfortable, but I don't think you can really get comfortable seats unless you're willing to upgrade your your seat. So, I mean, the only bad part was where they seated us. Like, we had chosen uh, uh, specific seats, and we didn't get those. And then on the way back, V and I were sat in different sides. So, uh, that, was, that was the only thing. If I'm looking at it from not a personal point of view, but just functionality, mm -hmm. that was probably the only thing that we found annoying with with our first flight is that we just uh our seats were wrong than what we paid for i mean no not do, not fly that long with five women won't happen 15 hour flight from vancouver to brisbane you looks like when we booked our flights um crystal wanted the aisle seat because because she had to get up to the bathroom I took the window seat, and we were hoping nobody would get sat in between us. Yeah. Had no such luck. Both well, if it's, a, if it's a booked flight, yeah. But the person in the middle would probably rather be at the window or the aisle. So if you wanted to trade, you could possibly um, do that. Going down, Crystal switched with him, and she sat beside me and that. But, you know... I had to get up once to go to the bathroom. I think she got up two or three times to go. You know, we apologized profusely. And then coming back, we had a, a guy in between us. So it was like. Well, it's the risk you take, right? She slept and I sat there most of the time just videoing out the window. And <laughs> I prefer to look out the window. <laughs> yeah, I, I got the window seat for my first ever plane flight. It was quite interesting for me anyways. Bunk. When I flew out west with the with my two kids, going out, one of them had the window seat. Coming back home, the other one had the window seat. Right. That way, they both got nice stuff, sat in the middle. Yeah. But it was a bummer going. Um, when my oldest was had the window seat when we were going over the mountains between Calgary and Vancouver. Oh, that'd be nice to see. It was beautiful. <laughs> I was kind of wishing. No, I was wishing I had the window seat back then. Yeah. I, I wasn't doing video and stuff like that. That was yeah. that was a decade ago. So, but that would have been cool. I think I took a video of my my first experience on the plane, uh, just from my perspective. You know, I don't know. I think I look more shocked than anything else. Like, as you know, I like planes. I just haven't ridden in them. Uh, <laughs> three of them have ADHD and autism. I don't, I don't have the autism, but all of mine had ADHD and two of them had anxiety. And that pops up. I can imagine with the autism added on top. Return flight will be Sydney to Dallas, Texas. That one's about 16 hours. I, when I was really, really young, I did a trip to Europe with my parents. That was an eight hour flight. But that was, I think, when I was in grade eight. So from that very, very first flight I've ever had to just a year ago, still, that was my first flight in a long, long, long time. And I remember back then, it wasn't too bad. It was just the landing, landing in Europe. It, it seemed like the plane was always dropping and then going and dropping, and I did not like that feeling. So I was worried that that would happen in this flight, but that it didn't. It, I could feel it going down, but it was it was more of a ramp, if you want to call it that, just kind of steady. But I still felt the motion of of that dropping, and I that's why I don't think I'd do skydiving because I can't handle that feeling of falling. All right, turn plane. <clears throat> Mark it down, Saturday, May 18th, 2024. We'll see what gets closer. Meetup happens. I can pencil it in my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> hey. 
<laughs> that last sentence. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes, yes, she will. <laughs> I was going to suggest something, but no, better not. <laughs> That might be a maybe for me, because that's that's the long weekend. I may be got LARP. I'm more than likely will be a LARP. But. Maybe to get away for the day. I can get away for the weekend. <clears throat> See what it can do when it, gets, when it gets closer. Well, folks, I think I'm going to call it there. So Steve wants to hang on. Thanks for hanging out with me, folks, and keeping me company while I cook dinner. I will see you guys Thursday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard for my regular live stream. <laughs> find my thing here. Take care. Love y'all. Bye for now.